Hi, my name is Dr. Janet Conway, and I practice at the Rubin Institute, and I am going to show you how to make some antibiotic coated plates today. So, what you need before you start is some Tigon tubing, silicone tubing, to help you make your plate. We have several different plate options here today of different thicknesses and variety. And we'll coat a bunch of these. Now, before we start, we use a 40 gram pack of cement. And when we add antibiotics to it, because we're using the antibiotic coated plate, it winds up being 3.6 grams of tober and a gram of Anko. You're gonna need extra monomer because this will make it very thick. So at least two monomers per one bag. Coating plates can be a little tricky because it's a round tube and you're putting a square plate into it. And so this requires a little more fiddle factor. But I'll first start by cutting my tubing to the size of my plate so that it's more manageable. This one is of course a bent plate so you'll have to play with this a little bit more. And then we have some locking screws that we can put in so that we can keep our threads clear and I'll show you how to do this. So we will have added our antibiotics in and our powder. Since I'm coating multiple plates, we'll use two bags. Now, I will tell you for demonstration purposes, I did not add my antibiotics into this batch of cement so I don't waste them. But you would, for all intents and purposes, if you use two bags, use at least three three and a half monomers uh, if you're going to add the 3.6 grams of Tobra and a gram of Anko per bag. just makes it easier to use a cement gun to fill the tubes. Okay, so now we'll first start. We can put this little plate in and just sort of stick it in there and then you'll be able to see through the silicone tubing and you can cover the whole thing. So now what I like to do is because this is of course a round tube, I'll take one of the trays in the OR and I will just smush it. So that's one. Now this one is a little tricky because it's bent and we may want to use a second piece of tubing. can also see if I can s inject this at the top here. The bend does make it tricky. So now you can see I have my tube filled with cement and I have my plate pretty much coated. So then the same thing for this. I'll put this underneath here. Here comes this next plate. We're going to stick this in. This plate is huge, and of course I'm not going to be able to put the bottom part into the, into the plate, so we'll have to fool around with that, but I'll do my best to get a nice even coating on the top part. So well now what I'll do is, this top part is coated, and so then what I'll do here is cut this and see if I can't just help myself in the bottom here. This is, it's not uh, awesome because I don't have a 
great piece of tubing that will go over this bottom part, but I can at least use the silicone to kind of make it flat and mold it. Not ideal, but the best we got right here. So that'll be that part. And then let me see if I can get another piece and cut it for the top. Because the silicone is nice, it doesn't really stick to the cement at all. And so I can, you know, even use a clamp if I wanted to, to kind of hold this down. To get this uh, a little more uniform. And again, sticking this underneath and waiting for it to get a little bit doughy. But I still have a really nice coating there, even if it's not 100% uh, perfect. So you can see where I'm getting some good coating on this plate. So I'm gonna put this, like I did the other plates, underneath my uh, tray. This, I don't think maybe is gonna work 100%. Take a coker and just kinda hold that together a little bit. It's not, it's not awesome, but it will get the job done. So this is coming along and it's getting doughy. So it's pretty good here with the, the coating. You can use your scissors to trim because it is getting doughy. If you need to, change your gloves because it's hard to work with the cement once it gets stuck on your fingers. And I try to get this done before the case actually starts because then I'm not waiting for the cement to get hard. Everyone's going to wonder what you want to do with these screw holes. So now, there's two ways to do it. One, you could drill them out, or two, you could do this with your screw so that the screw threads are clear. And when it's doughy like this, it's easy to work with. So I have a nice hole there, and then I have a nice hole there. So I'll be able to get my locking screws in no problem with this. And again, when it's doughy, it's pretty easy to just, you can keep your cement. If it gets hard and you want to still use your locking, you can do it, use a drill bit and just drill them out before you use it. Might be easier to put my drill bit in here, same thing. Wipe it out a little bit. And I can cut my excess off the top. Even with this fat plate, I still have some pretty good coating on the bottom. Pretty good coating on the top. It's not too fat. If you're worried about what kind of soft tissue coverage you have underneath there, you are, have loaded it up with good antibiotics so that you can get good delivery. And it is a process. So I'm gonna let that sit for one minute. Now we're going back to our other plates. We're gonna see how these are doing. So this one, the little guy, I can cut this off now with a knife. Now this cement is still moldable. So I can make this even flatter if I want to, if I'm worried about the thickness of the plate underneath the bone. I can squish this down some more. As you can see, it's still soft. And so I think I'm gonna let this sit a little longer to just squish it down a little more. So I'll let that wait for a minute. Put some more heavy stuff on this side. So now this one's looking pretty good, and I'm going to cut this silicone off. So here we go on this one. I'm even able to coat this bent plate that actually looks really good. I love it, and so sometimes it's easier the longer you wait. Uh, now at this point, I can drill out the holes, or I can put a screw through. But I think if you really want a nice, even coating without a lot of uh, problems with the cement coating, you should just wait for it to completely dry and then drill it out. But look how, look at that. The plate size compared to the actual plate size is a really thin coating. And so I think that this is completely reasonable. I don't think it really adds to uh, increase your volume that much in the soft tissue department. And so I wind up doing this myself on the back table. I don't let anyone else do it because the fiddle factor for an antibiotic coated plate is high, as you can see. But at the end of the day, there's some things that can only be fixed with plates. And it's a nice thing to be able to do. I've used this most commonly 
for infected elbows for elbow arthrodesis, infected humeral fractures that need to be replated, and I've also used it most commonly for fibular plates. So here I am just cleaning out my screw holes. The cement is getting hard. So at this point, I will probably think about using power and a drill bit. All right, so I think I have most of my screw holes done here. One, two, three, four, and then the, there's the blade. So this is one antibiotic coated plate. This one, we'll go back to this one, cut this off. So as you can see, this doesn't take too long. And then if you're worried about the plate sitting, you can trim some of this, or even use a burr. But if you just look at the thickness of the tube or thickness of the plate, it really doesn't add very much at all. It's not too bulky, okay? And you have the whole plate coated with antibiotics. Uh, and you can patch it up if you need to down here, but it comes in handy. The whole plate portion connect, uh, that is next to the bone is completely coated, and so I think this is really nice. Good bailout technique, and because this cement has now gotten hard, I'll need to use a power drill bit to drill the rest of these out, but I was able to do a lot of these screw holes before it got too hard. Let's go to our little plate. Because it was such a big tube and because this was a little plate, I think this cement mantle will be thicker than the other ones. And you can always fool around with this a little bit more. And put something heavier on it. But here this plate, here's this thickness to this plate. It is a little thicker. And then for these screw holes, I will need to drill these out, as you can see. But the other option, too, is to drill them out even when you're right on the patient. So that it's, you just drill them out once. Here we are with the power. We can drill these out my holes of course be careful so that's what you can do and the other thing is too you can file this down if you're worried about it being proud or prominent you can take your file and file it down a little bit but if you're careful, I think you can get this job done without having to do too, too much in the filing department. So just smooth it out a little bit. Now for these holes, I can drill these holes out. But when you wait for it to get hard, it really doesn't ruin any of your coating. So you can see I have full access to my hole. Okay. If you're really worried about the locking, I showed you you can put the screws in. Uh, you know, uh, and clean it out when it's still doughy. But this works great. And it's a pretty good solution to bail you out of a pretty tough jam. And so I feel like it gets the job done. So again, good coating on the back side, good coating on the front side. We'll go with the little plate. We can, we can do the same thing with the little plate. Get all our holes out. And if you're not going to use those holes, don't even bother, uh, you know, uh, cleaning them out. But same type of thing with the small plate. I can go through and drill all these out. You may want to use more than one drill bit because they will, it will get dull. Same type of thing. So... Here we are, I can keep drilling, but you get the idea. And so here is your antibiotic coated plate. The little baby plate. So here's your bent plate you can coat. And that works great. Here's your large plate. The part that actually fits in the silicone tubing looks great. 
because it's nice and smooth and even. Um, the part that doesn't fit in the plate, you do have to fiddle around with, but again, you can still get the plate next to the bone coated. And then even the little plate, you can do a good job keeping it thin and getting your entire plate coated. Again, a nice bailout situation, uh, and you can always patch this up while you're waiting for the cement to dry. It's, again, a nice technique, and it is effective, and uh, there is a publication on this with about six or seven plates in the foot and ankle literature, mostly for uh, fibular plates uh, from the Rubin Institute. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and good luck in the OR.